My name is Diego Araujo. I'm uh, the writer and director of Feriado Holiday, a film from Ecuador about uh, teenagers and uh, discovering oneself. Me encanta verle a la ciudad así, boca arriba. A veces le veo, le veo, le veo tanto que ya no sé si soy yo el que está al revés o es la ciudad. Yo creo que es la ciudad, ¿no ve? <laughs> Did you already have screenings of your movie in, in Ecuador? No. So this is world premiere here? Yeah. Okay, how was the reaction to your movie here? Uh, it's been amazing. It's been uh, like mind-blowing. It completely blew me away. Everybody, you know, because we came and I really didn't, you know, of course, I, <laughs> I know, you know, I, I, Berlin Alley is something that's, you know, it's always been on my, my mind, but I really didn't know how, you know, I thought it was going to be, I, I don't know, you know, how big the venue was going to be. I thought it was going to be a smaller venue, less people. Mm -hmm. But we had, um, I mean, we had a full theater and the audience was amazing. Like, we had this really, really amazing reaction, you know. Everybody was blown. It's like, uh, you know, people came afterwards to talk to us, to thank us. People were really moved. Uh, and it was also very diverse because, I saw, you know, it was people, from all ages, this little 12 year old girl, this you know, uh, older man, uh, the actors sign autographs, you know, we win stopped on the street. Uh, Seriously, on the streets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys, you know, at least three, four times, you know, they've been, uh, uh, you know, oh, you know, I saw you on the film. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, I, it's amazing, you know, like this generosity and warmth from the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very special from, from, from the festival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I mean, I have the feeling that a lot of people go to the cinemas, yeah, actually people that are not specialists on movies, like not yeah. press, not filmmakers and so forth, but right, yeah, it's yeah, just for the say. people yeah. as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems like it's people from the city, which, you know, I find it very nice for mm -hmm. a festival. It's not your typical audience in a way, and it's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, something that I found interesting about your movie was, um, well, first of all, a question. You, you had the financial crisis in there. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose for this particular crisis to be in there? Why did you choose that as the setting for the movie? Well, because it's, you know, it's this moment in Ecuador that's probably the biggest, most determining moment in, the, in recent history of Ecuador, you know. Um, and everybody has... I, everybody has like a very particular memory about that moment. Yeah. I lived in New York for eight years. So, it, you know, it's 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 not, you know, just it, it, it's not a comparison. It's just like a parallel. It has nothing to do one with the other. But you know, all my friends who were there in September 11 in New York have a memory of exactly you know what they were doing at that time, you know, at that moment when it happened. Mm -hmm. So you know, again, you know, it's a very there's a long distance with the parallel. But in Ecuador, everybody has this moment where um, you know you know you knew what you were doing at that particular moment, you know, when when the announcement of the of the bank holiday was made, and then um, everybody directly indirectly, you know, lost money. People lost their, their retirement money, um, and almost 20 percent of the Ecuadorian population left the country, uh, you know, after this happened because uh, of the. You know, financial situation. Mm. So it was terrible, and it's, you know, it still has an effect mm. in Ecuador today. Okay, but initially, I, I really didn't set up to do it. <laughs> uh, I just, you know, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, in, in in the in the genesis of the script, I wanted to do uh, about land and you know, landowners, which also has to do with class difference. Um, and then, you know, when this bank corruption thing, you know, element. Uh, I, I, I started working on this. 
And maybe the second person that read, you know, one of the first drafts of the script is Ecuadorian. And he right away just assumed that the film was taking place in 1999. And immediately realized that, hmm. you know, anything related to bank corruption, everybody was going to point out that year because that's when, when big things happen in Ecuador. So. Hmm. so that's how that got in there? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. you were already talking about the class division. Hmm. Um, that is also something that is still visible in the society nowadays? Yeah, yeah, or Okay. Yeah, completely. I mean, I, I, you know, what happens in uh, in the film with Juan Pablo, with the lead character, that he goes and you know and watches this terrible, um, you know, thing with men uh, yeah. are hitting the, the young guy. Actually, I, I, I went through the same thing. You know, when I was a, I was a kid, I was eight, eight, nine years old, and I was at a family party, and I realized something was going on. And went outside because you know the adults were going outside, and I saw this man hitting a kid that had been robbing the mirrors of, and that you know that really stuck me. You know, it was like such a powerful image to me. You know, you're a kid, you can't really do much, you, and you feel you know, the, you feel powerless, but you know that it's there's something very very wrong with that. But it really like um, I think you know it reflects how the dynamics of society work in Ecuador. You know? In, I would say, you know, Latin America, but in Ecuador, I, I think Ecuador is a, is a very, very divided country. It's a very intolerant country. There's a lot of racism, and, um, and that goes, you know, together, hand in hand with, with class division, you know, mm. class division and race. Yeah, exactly. That's also what you see in the movie. It's yeah. not just the, the class division, but it is also racism that you see there. Mm. And, it is also that way that class and race are sort of combined, that you see very often people with an indigenous background that they are of less wealth. That yes. is also still the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very common. And, it, and it's kind of very embedded in everyday life, you know? Uh, yeah, things that to me, you know, I, I don't think, in this, it's something that, that's so embedded in culture that I don't even think people realize or think mm. about it, you know? Uh, I've heard things, I've heard terrible things, you know, throughout my life, like people talked about an indigenous person, and like this person is very, in Spanish it sounds worse, this person is very rational, you know, as if, you know what I mean? Rationality would be a, a, a quality, you know, like, like as if this would be a surprise, you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's, so, and it's the same with homophobia in Ecuador, I think there's, all these elements of intolerance that are really part of everyday life. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's terrible. It's uh, machismo, you know, it's, it's uh, many, many, many elements, I think. And, uh, you know, a lot of this, I guess, it's, you know, or some of these elements are mm. present uh, in the film. So, so homophobia is also very present in, yeah. in, in Ecuador? Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, homosexuality was penalized until 97. In Ecuador, it's very present in, um, in 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 media, for instance. You know, I think there's a very violent relationship towards the the GLBT community mm. because um, yeah, but w w w one thing is the representation, another thing is the official, you know, governmental um, discourse. You know, there's been a lot of talk about. Uh, Equalitarian marriage, mm -hmm. um, and basically the official position is, is uh, kind of like to be aligned with the Bible, you know. <laughs> uh, and we live, in, you know, we don't live in a religious country, so um, you know, it's like I don't care what the president thinks. You know, this is this is a this is a non-religious country, so every citizen, you know, we should all have the same rights, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Uh, we are about you know, I respect your personal beliefs, but you know, those are your personal beliefs. It's a matter of it's a matter of human rights. It's, it's as simple as that. So, hmm. yeah. Well, this is kind of surprising to me because um, if you look at other countries in Latin America, you can also see that there are a lot of very Catholic countries that are still open. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking of Argentina, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was more or less expecting that also in Ecuador you have a stronger division between the state law and the religion. But there is. So. There, I mean, there is. A, there has been a, a division, but there is a big influence of... of Religion and uh, uh, you know and government, and I also think there's like a populist because you know religion has a lot of power you know in in, in, in people. Mm -hmm. and I think there's also like a populist kind of quality of discourse that politicians have. We're supposed to have a very 
you know, left progressist government. But, you know, we're like seeing decisions of, you know, of a Catholic left or yeah, even like a right wing government kind of, you know. Mm. So, yeah, but I think the populism has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Mm. Well, in the movie, I didn't see that much, well, statal racism or statal discrimination against homosexuals, but it was on a very personal level with, for example, this other family member, the cousin, the, the strong guy. Yeah. I mean, he was a character you just immediately disliked. And um, I had the feeling that it really comes together all in this one person, that this is sort of really the homophobic guy and also the guy who's very discriminating against the other one who's against Juan Pablo who is more of a thinker, someone who's sensible, uh, sensitive and yeah, I, I found that very interesting that it was on such a personal level. Well, yeah, I, you know, I was trying, I, 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 you know, I don't dislike completely the character because I know a lot of people like that, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of, of course, there's a lot of, you know, what, what I'm saying is that I'm, I wasn't trying to create this character that you completely hate, but I was trying to show that it's kind of what, what I'm saying, you know, that this, you know, like all the all the homophobic comments, or, you know, how he comes, oh, you're a faggot, da da da. Um, it's kind of like so embedded in in everyday culture, in everyday life in Ecuador. So he's kind of he's kind of like that, you know. He doesn't he probably doesn't reflect too much about it, you know. Hmm. But uh, you can also see that, especially in the beginning, he's. He's also being playful with it, you know. He doesn't do it with a, yeah. He doesn't at least uh, maybe consciously do it with a bad, you know, with a bad intention mm. uh, to put it like that. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I have to admit, I really dislike the character. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, and well, mainly the movie is about Juan Pablo sort of trying to also discover himself, yeah, yeah, also course. positioning himself in the family, and also in well how he relates to racism, how he behaves toward people that are racist and people who are, have an indigenous background. And um, I, I really like this, this journey he's going through in this movie and how he's sort of growing up. Um, mm. Yeah, I like the process he's, he's going through. Mm. Yeah, that, that's, to me that's, you know, that's the, the, really the center of the story. You know, it's the journey of discovery of Juan Pablo. Um, you know, it's not only the affirmation of his sexuality, but it's also discovering another universe with Juano. Um, you know, another universe where he feels that he can belong to, and uh, you know, through Juano's, uh, you know, family, grandmother, godfather, but also through you know, metal. You know, the, this metal culture, which is kind of like a self culture in Ecuador. So it's basically yes, discovering this this uh, new world through this to this other character. Mm -hmm. And you have those scenes in there where they are on the roof. Yeah. It's also in the beginning where you see the right. city upside down. Right, right. Mm. How did you get the idea for that? Because <laughs> uh, I used to do that with a friend, you know, stand <laughs> on the roof like that. And uh, so, but it was this idea, you know, that the, Juan Pablo is, uh, you know, this sensitive guy and tries to express his his feelings, you know, how he feels. He doesn't know, you know, if it's him who's. That's what he says in the story, you know. Mm. He, he's the one who's upside down the city. He, he knows he feels different, and he's trying to figure things out, you know, and he, that's also his space where he probably goes there to think about things, you know, when he wants to be alone, that's the place where he goes, and that's something special that he wants to share with Pano when they are at his place. Mm. Mm. And in the end, well, he, he goes to Juano and finally, well, he wants to speak with him again, but uh, it's sort of, well, he doesn't. Well, Juano, I don't know, I wasn't sure if it is his wife he's living with, but in the end, Juano okay. doesn't, doesn't want to be with Juan Pablo. That was obvious. But still, the end was very light in a way. He was not depressed or heavy or, I don't know. When the movie finished, I had the feeling it was a happy ending because either way, Juan Pablo became himself, sort of, or is on the right way to become himself, and was quite confident with himself. Yes, I, mean, I agree. And to me, it's more bittersweet. But um, you know, I, I, I feel in a way the, the girl who's there with Juano is the girl that works in the in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, you know, Juan Pablo's uncle's house. Oh, is it the one who's the servant? Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, okay, I didn't uh, realize that. I have same to girl. Okay. Uh -huh. Because it, oh, she was more present in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in the script. But, um, so that, that was kind of the idea, you know, that he was there and when she comes out, that's, of course, you know, Juanos, after Juanos' re rejection, but it's also like when she comes out, I feel like, and that I realized when I saw the cut, you know, when I saw one of the first edited versions of the cut, is that I felt like at that moment, Juan Pablo's dream also, he kind of wakes up from the dream because one is, is, is uh, the fact that, you know, Juano is not really in, in love with him or, you know, he doesn't want to do anything with him. But the other is that, you know, he's actually, you know, having, you know, having some, some, you know, some kids' romance with, with a servant in, uh, in, in the house of his family. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of also this class thing, you know, that in Ecuador, I feel is impossible, you know, to. So that's when kind of Juan Pablo realizes that he, you know, these are two worlds apart. But in the um, end, they're not anymore because then he suddenly realized that one world is also part of the other, isn't it? Then, if the servant is, is also there with Juano. Yes, but she belongs to that world. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. In, in okay, terms I, of class difference, yeah. that's what I'm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. Why did and you? And also, I'm sorry, but yeah. uh, but um, but but you know, in the in the very end, he opens himself to La Flaca, to his, his friend, so he, mm -hmm. even though, you know, it's, it's sad because, you know, he doesn't get the boy, but he finds, you know, he finds a friend, basically, you know, that is willing to, to understand. To understand and to who's understand. also very open. Right, right. And she's, she's not rejecting him or anything, yeah, she's yeah, just so like, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Mm. Why did you decide, decide to set the movie in, in the 90s, apart from that the crisis came in then? Why did you decide to put it...? That, that was the main decision. I mean, I didn't want to, <laughs> because I know what it would imply, you know? And uh, the more I thought about it, the more... Because, you know, in the beginning, it was like, hey, is, you know, it's not that far away. <laughs> but mm -hmm. then we started watching, you know, just documenting, uh, watching films from the 90s and, and looking at pictures, and, oh, man, it's like... And we didn't want to create this super 90s world. We wanted to create like a, a world that didn't seem too obviously 90s. They're also a big part of the film. They're, they're in the countryside. And in the countryside, you know, it's more neutral in a way. Uh, but it implied, you know, cars from the period and cell phones from the period and clothes from the period. Um, so I, I didn't want to. But um, as I told you, you know, I was trying to tell the story of these two teenagers in this very idealistic um, relationship in this background of, of social and family chaos. Um, and to do so, you know, to talk about the bank crisis in Ecuador, I had to talk about this particular time, which I also found very, very interesting. So we decided to do it. At that time, we, I wasn't living in Ecuador at that time, so I wasn't actually present while, you know, the feriado, the holiday happened. So we, we documented ourselves also really well. We talked to, I guess in the beginning, you know, I thought it was going to be more present. Now I feel, you know, it's more like a background. But I know it's so important for everybody in Ecuador, so we talked to people who lost their money. Uh, and we talked to the main figures, and we talked to the president that actually took the decision of, of, um, uh, of declaring the, the you know, mm -hmm. freezing the accounts, basically. He's, uh, he, he flew Ecuador, <laughs> and he now, he, he's a teacher in Harvard right now. In Harvard, <laughs> on <Yes>. economy? <laughs> yes, <laughs> now in <laughs> mediation, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, but you know, we talked to the people who had to do with those decisions, because we yeah, I kind of also wanted to understand both sides of, of uh, of the story, you know, mm. the situation to tell this. Mm. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Mm. And well, you, you chose a lot of very heavy topics, homophobia, racism, discrimination, the economical crisis, mm -hmm. and you put it into a movie with main where the main characters are young people, not adults yet, and um, it's running here in the generation, meaning for kids and young people. Mm -hmm. 
why did you make this decision to have all these heavy topics in, well, combined with this young theme? I mean, I guess, you know, I wanted to talk about these themes that really, you know, um, that interest me and worry me. Uh, before, you know, I made a documentary series about five teenagers in five, you know, from five different like social, social economic places in Ecuador in the last three months of school. Um, and actually one of these characters was, was the inspiration for the character of Juano, you know, in the way he speaks, especially. Mm -hmm. But, um, but actually it was funny because I, I, you know, and I love like this, to tell stories about this, maybe because my teenagers were super special, you know, it's like, I feel you're so vulnerable at that time and you, you don't know, you know, life is amazing, but you don't know really where to go. Mm -hmm. And then something happens and it really like determines um, where you go, you know, that is that time where, where you can go so many, so, you know, in so many directions. And then, so that's what I stressed, you know, like this moment that's very determining in your life and then you take this path. Um, so yeah, I'm interested about that, that time of, uh, in life. And I, I actually, when I made the film, you know, when I was writing, I didn't know the film was going to, I feel it's like, like a very juvenile film. Uh, and I love that, you know, but I didn't realize until I saw, you know, one of the first cuts of the film. On the script, I felt it was a film more for, uh, you know, for people my age, you know, and we were always thinking, you know, this should be for younger kids, you know, because those are the main characters. But we didn't feel, um, it, it was very strange. It was very mm -hmm. strange watching the film. And of course, you know, it's now in generation, so it, that yeah. uh, tells you a lot about the, you know, the, the, also, you know, the age, not only of the characters, but of, of the audience. Uh, I think it's great, but it's something that kind of, I realize, in post-production. Mm -hmm. mm. So it was not intended no, no, no. from the beginning on? No, and I know, you know, but I, I, what, what was intended is, you know, I didn't want to tell, even, you know, I had all these ideas that I, I wanted, or, or all these themes, but I, you know, I, of course, I, I didn't want to tell anything pamphletarian or, you know, try to make a discourse, so I tried to have this, really what I wanted to tell, you know, is this love story between these two boys. Mm. And one of them, he doesn't talk much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, the movie has not been screened in, in Ecuador yet. Do you already know when it will be screened? Yes, uh, May two, uh, we're gonna have our national premiere and in Ecuador. What do you expect? What the reactions will be like? Um, or what um, do you hope for? Yeah, well, we, you know, we ho I know like people are really, really expectant. Um, you know, with uh, when the film uh, got to Berlin. Um, Oh, got accepted to Berlin Ali was a big thing in Ecuador, I felt, because this, this is the first film from Ecuador that, uh, that's here in the festival. Uh, so I felt like we had a lot of press in Ecuador. Uh, so I know more and more people are getting to know the film. We have a fav Facebook page that has like almost 50,000 people following the film and really attentive to the news and, and you know, asking us when the, when the mm -hmm. premiere was, is going to be. So I think there's people who are expecting the film, I know I've talked to people from the LGBT community that have told me that oh, we're really, I, I also didn't know, you know, that it, it's surprising to me, you know, that people come to me and say, oh, we know about your film and we're really, <laughs> really, uh, you know, uh, expecting uh, the, the, the premiere. So, and of course, you know, I hope it, it, it raises some dialogue, you know. Uh, as I was telling you, the, the debate about uh, equalitarian marriage was going on just mm. recently. Um, so yeah, if you know, we managed to raise dialogue in society uh, about, you know, homosexuality, I think that's, you know, that'll be amazing. Mm. Well, I hope you will have a very good premiere in Ecuador. I hope you will raise all the discussions about racism and homophobia mm -hmm. and um, enjoy the rest of the festival here. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.